Hey guys, this is D Flash, and wanted to give you a quick update. I just picked up the new Roland Ira System One synthesizer, and I just wanted to let you know, share with you some of my first impressions and what I think of it. I've only been playing with it for about an hour now, but um, I'm pretty happy with it and how it sounds. Um, it's got some good presets already loaded, um, your standard stuff that we, they'd probably want to show off in the store. Hi. And this is the sounds produced by the System 1 synthesizer. Um, I know a lot of people have been giving a lot of attention to the plug out, which is the SH-101. I've got this loaded up already with the SH-101. As you can see, everything that does not control the SH-101 gets dimmed, so you can just see the controls that are relative to what you're doing and what you're controlling. So it's got some SH-101 patches also loaded up. So it's got it's a pretty pretty good sounding 101. As I was thinking about getting this, I got some of the SH101 plugins just to see if that was the type of sound I was looking for. And this sounds just as good, if not better, than some of the plugins I was playing with. So let's go back to the system one. Here's a patch I was playing with that I was making. It's got an arpeggiator built in. It has reverb and delay. And then it's got the scatter effects over here. And what that does is it actually changes the groove that the arpeggiator uses. So I'm going to turn on key lock. And scatter also I'll do some changes. And some of these patches actually have some other things that scatter will change with it. So if we turn this one on, and you'll see that whatever is being changed will start to flash with it. Okay, this one doesn't do that. Okay, so I'd seen that happen before, I don't know... There you go. So you can see if it's changing the filter, the resonance, and the crusher. They flash to reflect that. 
The other cool thing is when you're tweaking a patch that's already in here, the second you change a parameter, it starts to flash to show you that you changed that patch. Okay, so let's take a look in Ableton on how to get it set up so that you can use it with Ableton. Um, first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change the mode that it's in. The it comes in three modes. The first one that it ships with. Oh, that's right. You got to hold these two. And the first mode that ships in is mode two. And what that does is if you press a key, and if a host is if a host application or something sends MIDI to it, it'll produce sound. When you put it in mode one, what that does is it turns off the keyboard locally, and it will the keyboard will send MIDI to Ableton, and it will respond to the MIDI from Ableton. And then the last one puts it in just a MIDI controller mode and it won't produce sound at all but it will send MIDI to Ableton so we'll put it back in mode 1 and then we'll take a look in Ableton I'll show you how we set this up so I already have it on a track what I did was I dragged in the external instrument you set your MIDI 2 to system 1 and your audio from is wherever it's plugged into on your sound card uh, you can see on the system one I've got the USB cable, the power cable, and the audio cable plugged in. And the audio cables are going into my uh, Audio 8 sound card. And then I've got it turned on in the Ableton settings. So once you do that, you can start recording your MIDI in. and Ableton will record any changes that you make on your um, on the knobs. So right here I recorded some automation from the Crusher. And you can hear how it sounds with uh, that patch loaded that I was messing with. Now, one thing that uh, you might say is, well, okay, that's great, but what if I want to record multiple different sounds? So what you would do is you would actually just freeze this track. Once you've got a loop that you like, and when you freeze it, it's going to take this loop, and it's going to play it back in real time. And now you've got it frozen as a WAV file. What you can do then is just drag it, hold down control, and drop it onto a track. And you'll hear this. So you can hear how this can. Uh, this is a pretty good sounding synth. Um, I haven't even really started to dive into it, but I can find that it's going to be inspiring to use something that you can just grab a knob and turn it and um, get instant results. Um, it's very much like when I first started using Machine and how you know you you have hardware dedicated to specific tools and specific sounds, and it helps you to just come into a groove and not get stuck with um, clicking around and trying to get um, the sounds that are in your head out. Um, so I'm looking forward to using this and I'll post some more videos if I come across some more tips. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. If you have any tips yourself, feel pl please post them. And uh, I hope you enjoy this video and make sure you subscribe to get any updates that I post. Thanks again.